health-related illnesses. And this is when I'm not including blood pressure and diabetes, which also are kind of related to a lifestyle. And it was the same for interstroke, which was a disease of a case control study of stroke. And again, it's clearly seen that lifestyle risk factors like smoking, psychosocial stress, lack of physical activity, poor diet, and obesity, alcohol, all contributed to uh, the stroke. So obviously, diseases are clearly lifestyle related, but what are the uh, impacts of intervention uh, on, on lifestyle? We know that smoking uh, reduces uh, almost 13 years uh, of life in male and 14 years in female as compared to people who don't smoke. And one, people who smoke have two to three times higher risk of dying from coronary artery disease. And uh, there's a plethora of uh, evidence on uh, the linking tobacco and coronary artery disease. And, uh, but what is important to realize is that the moment you quit smoking, the benefit starts. Within 20 minutes, your blood pressure decreases, your body temperature goes down, your pulse rate returns to normal. The risk of MI decreases within risk of sudden cardiac death, especially, which is related to smoking, comes down within 24 hours. And, and by five years, your stroke risk is down to people who have never spoke and, uh, smoked. And by 15 years, a risk of coronary disease uh, also comes down to those of non-smokers if you quit smoking. Uh, these are the uh, I'll ways how to help people with smoking. I'll just skip this. But what are the strategies that could be adopted to reduce? We know right now developing countries are seeing a surge of increase in tobacco-related deaths. And if, while the Western uh, populations have managed to control smoking rates and tobacco use, it's actually going up in developing countries like India and China. And we need uh, uh, large programs, the school-based and community-based programs, and very importantly, legislations from governments. And uh, it's been clearly shown that smoke-free legislation, which is now uh, have been, has been done, uh, implemented in India, though, although implementation is a bit of an issue, but it clearly helps and reduces stroke uh, uh, heart attack rates by 40 to 50 percent. And this is very well elucidated in this Helena Montana study, which showed that once smoking free uh, legislation was put into place, within a year or so, the heart rate uh, attack admission rates in hospital in this small town reduced by 60 percent. However, due to uh, legislation and the industry went to court, the, the uh, ban was removed, and immediately then the stroke uh, M MI rates went up uh, in the next year. So obviously it's a huge impact of smoking. Coming to physical activity, uh, there is no doubt that physical activity helps, and this, in this large observational study we saw that for every one met, met increase in exercise capacity of an individual, uh, there was a 12% improvement in survival rates of people who smoke, uh, who, who, who were physically active. So every MET counts, and, and this was seen across people with history of hypertension, or they were smokers, diabetics, or obese. Everybody who was more physically active lived longer and had better survival than those who were less active. And, and it brings us to the theory of uh, kind of Charles Darwin of theory of evolution, which we mentioned that uh, life is an incessant struggle among individuals with different degree of fitness. And, and this is now actually being seen that people who are physically more active will be more fitter and will live longer. And uh, this is from a large uh, meta-analysis which clearly showed that in both men and in women, those who were more in the, in the, in the quartile, which were more active, most active was the least active, there was a 30% reduction in, uh, uh, in mortality in people uh, who were more active. And it was also even better in women, a 40% median risk reduction uh, uh, in risk of coronary artery disease uh, if you were more active. And the benefits were continuous. This was most in between low and moderate activity, but it was, uh, there was some more benefit if you were very highly active. So these are the uh, usual guidelines. Uh, at least uh, 150 minutes per week of moderate activity or at least 75 minutes per week of vigorous activity to get substantial health benefits from physical activity. Uh, in secondary prevention, we need to kind of have cardiac rehabilitation, and, but it is again very, it's been clearly shown to be beneficial. What about psychosocial stress? 
uh, the, this is again from a large randomized trial of more than 40 trials, which clearly showed that there was a 28 percent reduction in all cause mortality in people who were undergoing some form of different forms of psychological stress treatment as compared to people who were on a usual care. And psycho, uh, psychological treatment clearly reduced mortality across uh, this meta-analysis across several trials, and there was 28 percent reduction in mortality. Uh, and this was especially useful if the uh, psychological treatment was started a little late after the acute MI. Uh, and uh, I just briefly mentioned, being here, mentioned the very important Mount Abu open heart trial done by Satish Guptaji and uh, Professor Chopra and Dr. Nanda, who have clearly shown that healthy lifestyle using dietary, physical activity, and Raj Yoga med meditation led to atherosclerosis regression in those with greater than 50% uh, adherence to the lifestyle uh, uh, told to them. And this is another st study, uh, again published in the circulation cardiovascular quality outcomes, which showed that uh, transcendental meditation using Maharishi Ayurveda again led, led to significant cardiovascular event reductions. So these are all very scientifically done studies which are clearly showing that this helps. And uh, even in the modern guidelines, there are a class 1A evidence that multimodal behavioral interventions must be uh, are helpful in reducing CVD burden. What about nutrition? Uh, uh, obviously, much cannot be said about it. It's a very important part of lifestyle intervention. And uh, it is from a very nice study, uh, you know, in, in the uh, era of poly pill, where this uh, poly meal di diet was uh, proposed by this group. And they showed that, uh, you know, the beneficial diet which is uh, rich in f fruits and vegetables and garlic, al uh, almonds, and or fish led to almost a similar reduction in cardiovascular risk. This is a, obviously a model, but they modeled it to show that the benefits to cardiovascular disease would be as much as that of polypill, if not more, if you were to adhere to a healthy diet. Uh, just briefly about alcohol. You know, uh, it's been uh, touted as a cardiovascular disease prevention intervention, but unfortunately that doesn't show in, in India. And uh, this is from a study which we published in atherosclerosis in 2010, which clearly showed that in Indians, unfortunately, unfortunately, alcohol doesn't, even in small amounts, doesn't give protection. And the risks of the uh, odds ratio of CHD increase as more and more alcohol is consumed. There is corroborating evidence now in a very recent uh, study from BMJ, which published, which showed that this, uh, this, uh, 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 this benefit of uh, alcohol on cardiovascular disease is not seen. And this was a very beautifully done study uh, on Mendel Mendelian randomization, where they showed that people who have consumed less alcohol were actually, even then, they were not getting benefit as compared to non-alcohol consumers. It's a very important study. Unfortunately, it's not been publicized much but it clearly shows the lack of benefit of alcohol on cardiovascular disease prevention. And of course, we can't live in silos. If you see uh, the impact of alcohol on life, it is uh, uh, one of the uh, fifth largest killer in terms of global disease mortality. So it, alcohol is clearly linked to other diseases like cancer, uh, premature deaths to road accidents. So uh, the unfortunate, I think the alcohol is overplayed in CVD prevention. So just briefly on this famous lifestyle heart trial by Dean Ornish, which was published in JAMA, uh, they, where they had all these components of lifestyle intervention, which was a, a, a low fat diet, exercise, smoking cessation, and stress management. And they clearly showed that there was atherosclerosis regression in those people who were in the uh, intensive arm, that is in the intervention arm, and it was especially more in those who were most adherent as compared to the least adherent. So there's enough scientific evidence to show this, and this is again a meta-analysis of several such trials which have done, been done and has shown 25% reduction in all-cause mortality uh, in people who are undergoing lifestyle interventions across different trials done by different uh, authors. And uh, the, there was even further reduction in cardiovascular mortality in this meta-analysis of uh, several lifestyle intervention trials. 
So what, what is the, uh, just a couple of slides on why we don't, in, uh, what is the limitation? And if we see that, uh, this is a very beautifully done study in Australian GPs, it was realized that although this knowledge is there, it's not getting translated into the practice. And if you see here, hardly 50% and less than 50% of them were actually ready to assess the, the lack of, uh, assess the lack of use of these interventions, uh, whether it's smoking, nutrition. So obviously we are not advising our patients what we know. And that's a big limitation. And they kind of uh, asserted it to several reasons, heavy workload, unclear objectives, low priority for management. And uh, another very beautifully done study among Swiss GPs showed that physicians, uh, well, what were the physician characteristics among those who are not giving these lifestyle interventions? And showed those who are heavy alcohol, uh, who, who had heavy alcohol intake themselves and who were low on physical activity were the worst and, and the least likely to give you lifestyle interventions. So, uh, uh, so you know obvious reasons why it is not practice. Uh, so sorry for the interruption. This is just the last sorry. slide, sir, yeah. and I'll finish. Uh, so we, what is needed is appropriate training and so in, importantly supportive infrastructure. We, institutional priorities to lifestyle intervention need to be given. You know, there's far more emphasis on interventions and which are of course very important. But I think the same amount of importance needs to give, be given because it's uh, as useful as any other intervention is. So the take-home message is the lifestyle contributes to more than 50% of population attributable risk of CVD and healthy lifestyle prevents CVD and enough evidence is available that lifestyle use, uh, is useful in primary, in primary and secondary prevention of CVD and uh, the multiple barriers need to be broken down. Thank you. Thank you very much.